guys this video is a different one it just occurred to me to talk about it so this is about the things that i have learned on my journey my grief journey and i don't know if it applies to everyone but i think actually somehow it does so let's talk about it i for yeah i'll probably cut it into pieces so i don't know but let's just go on one thing i have learned after i lost my mom is that not everyone is family and so you don't have to give access to everyone just because you are blood related family is one who treats you like family and yeah that, that's just because family is one who treats you like family and who treats you like family if you don't know what to look out for it's in 2 Corinthians 13, 13. 2 Corinthians 13, the whole chapter actually. Just look through it. And you'll see that it's someone who knows that in that moment, you're vulnerable. You have to be protected. You're going through a lot. And that they will think ahead for you. So, I am very grateful that I had people or family members like that around me. And that helped me get, get myself back. Because a lot of the steps that I took as a very young person lost her mom at a young age. Like my mom was very, very young too, just 50, 51. So as a young person losing your mom at that young age in, in that, at that swiftness, like it was just sudden. Um, that is one thing that I learned was that family is not everybody who calls themselves family which is blood related but you have to be careful and make access to you rare like protect yourself close your eyes your ears to everything that does not serve you this is something a lot of people are expecting me to talk about and i'll talk about it before my mother died she told me that she doesn't want a gathering we should just do the funeral without any gathering and my mom was a very private person even her birthday she just celebrated with just us her family we didn't do big stuff i'm, I'm the one who likes big parties my family my brother my mom did not really people who, who do that so we immediately understood the wish was not an issue. But then in the Ghanaian culture, in the Ghanaian community and society, you were expecting that we'll do a big gathering because my my mom was well known. We used to have an Afro shop. People wanted to come and commiserate and everything. But then we kept it all under wraps, but you know, people would talk. They, I heard so many things and somebody even said, I have done it by invitation and whatnot. So I was quite um, surprised that people are not even empathetic to know that it's a lot going on and I'm just doing what I've been told to do. And mind you, what my mom asked me to do actually was for our good. They helped us because things in Germany go pretty fast. I think my first grief video, I talked about it, that in Germany, it's not common that you can keep your loved one for a long time, like the way we do in Africa, like for months before everybody comes together, before they get buried. We were literally given, I think, a week. Now I'm done on a Thursday and they told us the next Thursday or Friday the burial has to happen. So things had to go fast. So imagine me using one week to organize a caterer, a hall, music, you know, I was just overwhelmed. Even just the one we did, I was just overwhelmed. And a lot of people still came and I didn't see everybody. I cannot tell you which people I saw. Yes, I saw some friends that I didn't expect to see. 
because they came from far away. Those people I remember because at that moment I was like, wow, they came all the way. But a lot of people, they'll see me in town and they'll say, how are you doing? Like, thank you. And then uh, they said, you really thanked me. I said, when? They said, I was at the funeral. I was like, oh, see? And you know, some of the people will be like, eh, why should me name and everything? For that, it was minimized for me because I didn't throw a big gathering. Right at the cemetery, if you want water, you get water. And that was it. Done. And it really, really helped us. So for my mom's birthday a year after, we did the memorial and that was different. That was different. And it was still, it was still kind of private, but <laughs> it wasn't private, private because people, we let people know but we didn't announce it to everybody because it had been a year onwards and it was just for our friends and family to just celebrate our mom's birthday with us. And that was very beautiful, very, very beautiful. And that's what I would want for myself too, to be honest. No giddy giddy bia. And people didn't understand. So I heard so many things, so, so many things. and. I learned from that process to rise above what people are saying that they don't know the backstory to um, and all of that. Close your ears and your eyes to what does not serve you. In that same breath, be selfish. Be selfish. You know, lots of times as Christian children, we are told that you have to be selfless, Jesus first, others, and then yourself. You know, that's how you spell joy. Jesus, others, yourself. And I have learned through this process that I have to love myself first before I can love you. Because it says, love your neighbor as yourself. See, if you don't love yourself, where are you getting the love from for your neighbor? So that is one thing that I have learned from this, to be selfish, put myself first. Also because my mom helped a lot of people. Lots of people, and this one I'm not even bashing anybody because so they are one Everybody has their lives ahead of them and doing what they have to do. But people kept taking from my mom, and sometimes she would even involve me in the good that she was doing. So they were taking from my mom and taking from me indirectly as well or directly. But when this woman fell and was not there anymore, all those people who were taking from her wanted either also just disappeared or wanted me to step in. And then it would have been a cycle that would have continued. Yes, it's good to help and everything, but take care of yourself. That's what I mean by be selfish. Take care of yourself. Ask yourself what you're thing is, <laughs> Zuzka. <laughs> Chop your money. Tomorrow, take care of itself, I beg. I, I have this sound on Snapchat. If you heard the sound, it's mine. Zizo is in the next of King Fuya, Yenye. Next of King Yenyo. So I get him there, Obo. Many designer bags they go for. Designer shoes. Now they attach now. She. Don't, 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 don't wait for. Especially the Nanya that they've woken up. Enjoy yourself. Time and tide waits for no one. Okay? Enjoy yourself today. Today. And take care of yourself as well. I take care of myself. Like, I take care of my diet. I take care of myself. Like, I, I don't want to get sick. But also, I am very conscious of, just of what I let in. Right? So, these are the main things I have learned. And I hope it helps you out there. My phone is messing up a bit today, but I hope it helps you out there. If you enjoy these heart-to-heart -heart talks, let me know, guys. I'm going to do more because I also have things I've learned in my 30s. Um, but those are not more of, of just the emotional aspect, but how to just navigate through life, you know, like financial stuff and all of that. But yeah, these are the things I have learned. And I hope they help you as well. If, oh yes, another thing I have learned too is to accept help. Because I started grief therapy, I talked about that in my first grief video. 
and I did two um, classes so I did two winter classes and I'm so grateful that I did that because they gave me tips how to stay grateful how to stay positive how to forgive yourself because you deal with guilt but yeah I've done that this wouldn't have happened maybe I could have stopped it these are topics that are discussed there and how to forgive yourself, how to forgive your loved one, because sometimes there's some things that you never got to, to talk about, you know? But these are things that um, I hope you'd also do if you are grieving. It doesn't get better, not better, but lighter and easier. And there are still hard days. There are days that I would, I would pure something random and I would just cry, I would just cry all day, like my whole day. But then in that day, in that, or during that day that I think I had a bad grief day, I still... Sorry about the phone messing up today, but even on the bad days, I'm still able to smile and find something positive. It can always get better, so keep your head up and concentrate on the little things. Sending you hugs and love. See you on the next one. Mwah. Baby.